Hi everybody, I'm Tim with GPT. You probably remember me from Tim Talks. Today we're going to be going over how to install an isolation gasket. It could be any type of isolation gasket. They all have the basic requirements. We'll be going over those basic requirements. Before we do that though, we're going to be talking about safety. GPT happens to be one of the safest companies in the world and we have a lot of requirements when it comes to safety. Your company should as well. We recommend that you have safety shoes uh, steel toed or hardened plastic, that you have a visible vest, high vis vest, gloves, protective gloves, safety glasses, and a hard hat. If your company requires additional safety equipment, we recommend that you use that. If the company that you're working on their equipment, we recommend that you utilize their safety standards as well. So now we'll start talking about how to install isolation gaskets. We've got the flange open, we've got the bolts out. This is, in this case, it's blind flanges, uh, so you can see that there's no bore of the pipe. You're going to want to make sure that the flange face is nice and clean, there's no residual material. Check both sides. Check for any corrosion and pitting. If there's corrosion and pitting, then you're going to want to have to have that filled, if at all possible, uh, either through welding and then remachining or through Belzona or some type of material that will fill in those, those voids. Now that the flange is open, uh, you're going to want to take a look and make sure that you have the right size gasket. So on the gasket box, it will typically have a label that will tell you the size, the class. And once you know the size and class of the gasket, then you'll pull out the appropriate torque table. Okay. So we've got the appropriate torque table, and in this case, the nominal pipe size is 12 inch. It's a 900 pound flange, so we're going to be applying 640 foot pounds to this flange. Now that we know the proper torque, we're going to want to make sure that the flange is aligned. And it's very important you don't put the gasket in prior to having the flanges aligned with the proper opening for the gasket. Okay, so in this case it's very easy because we have a swinging arm and we'll be able to pull this over. We recommend that you align the flange first. There are a number of different ways this can be done. Many people will just use a metal rod, they'll use a spud. Uh, there are also some different types of tools for flange alignment. Regardless of the type of tool that you use, we recommend that you align the flange first. And in this case, I know that the flange is slightly misaligned. But once you get some alignment, you're going to want to put the studs in. We recommend studs and not bolts. The reason we don't recommend bolts is bolts often have a shoulder, and that shoulder can actually break the sleeve when you try to torque. So using a stud that's the appropriate length, and the appropriate length is so that the stud can go through the flange, the gasket, through all isolation washers, and still have at least two threads on each side exposed. So what I typically recommend is aligning the flange, and once the flange is aligned, installing the bolts with the washers, Okay, so now there are two different types of washers that can be used, at least two different types. You can use a diamond hide type washer or a fully encapsulated washer. This is what I would recommend because you can reverse these washers and they'll always isolate. The other option is to use a G10 or a G11 washer with a stainless steel or zinc plated steel backup. You're always going to want this, this metallic washer to be towards the nut. If you have the nut towards the G10 or G11 washer, you run the risk of cracking that GRE type washer, glass reinforced epoxy washer. Also, you want to make sure that the printed side and the raised side of the nut are away from the washer. So then I would slide this uh, typically in the lower positions right around the five o'clock position would be ideal. 
I'll use the alignment tool to make sure that the, this side of the flange is aligned. Okay, so now we've got the bolt in the 7 o'clock position. We'll put another bolt in the 5 o'clock position. Okay, so we've got the nuts, bolt, and the isolation washers installed at the 7 o'clock position. We do the same thing at the 5 o'clock position. So we've got the nut, bolt, and washers here as well. Now we want as much gap as possible. I know that sometimes that's extremely difficult. So there are flange spreaders on the market that you can utilize. Use those at this point. Installing a gasket in a flange that is not open wide enough can damage the seal or damage the material that can isolate. So, okay, during installation, one of the most difficult pieces could be putting the sleeve in place, especially if your flanges are slightly misaligned. So in those cases, you'll probably want some assistance. So Richard, if you could help align this flange we can get the sleeve further in. Now you're going to want the sleeve to be sticking out about one and a half washers distance so that you're properly isolated. Sleeves that are too long can be a problem because during installation they can be crushed or cracked. Sleeves that are too short can be a problem because they can collect conductive material and you lose isolation. So do the same thing at your seven, I'm sorry, your five o'clock position. So now we've got a couple of bolts in that helps align the flange and again it's extremely important to make sure your flange is aligned and there's enough space to be able to just slide the gasket in. So here we've got enough space we can just drop the gasket in. The bolts will center the gasket And that is a proper insulation. Don't use screwdrivers, don't use crowbars, don't use hammers to try to beat the gasket into place. If you're doing that, you don't have enough room in your flange. You've got to open that flange up with flange spreaders, you have to align the flange. One tip is that you may want to install the sleeve first rather than trying to attempt to install the stud and then the sleeve. So if you put the sleeve on first, make sure that the sleeve goes inside the washers, and then install that through the bolt holes. And as you can see, that was much easier than what we did earlier. Okay, so we've got a stud in every hole, bolt hole right now, and we put pico lube on every bolt on this side. Now we'll put pico lube on every bolt on this side before we put the nuts on. And any lubricant that you should use should not have a metallic particle in it, copper or nickel. You don't want any conductive materials in your lubricant. It's very important. It can defeat the whole purpose of your isolated kit. So you would simply apply this to every single bolt all the way around or every single stud. Okay, cut Okay, now we've got every stud lubricated with isolating lubricant, Pico Lube. We will now install washers, isolating washers on this side. So again, the non-metallic washer would go first, or again, I recommend diamond hide. You could put both on at the same time. Or if you're using G10 and CPS, or G10 and stainless steel, or G11 and stainless steel, you put the metallic washer on last, followed by the nut. Again, the flat side of the nut would go towards that metal washer. You would do this for every single stud and you would bring all the nuts together on the studs hand tight. Now this is a part that's often done improperly. Many folks doing insulation will use their wrench and they'll start tightening down. If they tighten down uh, to any significant foot pounds, they're going to misalign the flange. All right, so we've got all the nuts hand snugged and we went ahead and numbered all of these. So you can see one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. You want to make sure that you do a legacy or star pattern just like you would do on the lug nuts of your vehicle. Also, we now have two wrenches. This is a high torque wrench. You can use a calibrated torque wrench, but you've got to do one third of the total torque. So this one would be 640 foot pounds is the total torque. So we're going to put approximately 210 foot pounds on it the first pass. Now that the flange has been torqued to 210 foot-pounds in a star pattern, torque the flange to 420 foot-pounds in a star pattern, then follow it up with 640 foot-pounds of torque in a star pattern, then follow that up with 640 foot-pounds on every single bolt in a clockwise direction until you've hit every single bolt. So now it's time to do isolation testing, and for that we'll use an RFIT meter. This is recommended by NACE. NACE does not recommend an ohm meter, and I know many people use an ohm meter. It could give false readings, but an RFIT meter will give a definitive isolated or not isolated reading. So you're going to hear a tone about once every two seconds if you're isolated. If you are not isolated, you'll hear a much quicker tone. So in this case, we're going to do bolt to flange, flange to flange, and gasket to flange. When you do bolt to flange, you really should test every single bolt. So in this case, you want to have a good metallic contact. If the bolts are coated, or if the flange is coated, use the point to penetrate the coating or the insulation on the, on the flange. I also scratched to get through any coating and you'll see that it's isolated. You would continue this for every single bolt. We would also do flange to flange. You can see that that's isolated. And then touch the gasket and the flange and you'll see that that's isolated as well. So we've got a great installation. We know that everything's torqued properly. We know that everything's torqued evenly. We know that the gasket's isolated. Therefore, you've got a great isolation flange. Any questions, please go to our website, www.gptindustries.com. We'd be happy to help. Take care.